honored today, right, to listen to all these great speakers talk about, talk about things that can change our lives from childhood education to agriculture. And you know what else can change your life? Stories. Stories can change your life. When I was little, uh, my parents, they were never around. They have to run a small family grocery store in Bagol. And while I live with my grandmother about 280 miles away in Magui. This is not unusual in the Myanmar family, right? I know plenty of people who grew up like away from their parents and are raised by their relatives. Once a year, one of my parents, either my mom or my dad, will come and visit me for a few days. And they can never come together because someone still has to run the store, right? So from our childhood, I have photos of me and my mom. And I have photos of me and my dad, but never of the three of us together. It sounds bad, but it has its benefits too. At this age, in my neighborhood, I can walk up to any uh, adult and call them mom or dad to get whatever I want, which is awesome. Uh, I will go to the Moenga lady and say, mom, I'm hungry and I get free noodles. I go to the tri shot driver and say, dad, I need a ride. I get a free ride. That was awesome. <laughs> Somehow that doesn't work anymore. I have no idea why. So when I became a teenager, I was finally living together with my parents again. But there was a tangible disconnect between me and my parents. I never really felt close to them. And when you don't have that close connection with your parents, there are certain things that you don't talk about, certain things you won't share with them, certain questions you won't ask because you don't feel comfortable. And as a teenager, maybe you can imagine this, you know, I was into girls, I was starting to think about relationships. One of the questions that I, you know, a few questions that I wanted to ask them was, how did you guys meet? How did you fall in love? How did you get married? And how did I come to be? I didn't ask that question because I didn't feel comfortable at that time. Fast forward to 2013, I've been studying and living and working in the U.S. for about seven years. I came back to Myanmar in 2013. Despite what my presentation looks like, I thought I was older and more mature. And to have a good relationship with my parents, I thought was important for me. So I finally sat down with them one day and asked this question that I've been meaning to ask forever. How did you guys meet? My dad was a son of a farmer from the Gold region. At 18, he decided that he doesn't want to be a farmer anymore. So you know how teenagers like rebel against their parents by growing their hair out or getting like piercings? Well, my dad went full hardcore. He ran away and joined the army, which is, which is what a lot of teenagers did back in the days, back in the 70s. Meanwhile, my mom, was in Kachin State, 700 miles away from Bago. She was living with her widowed mother. They were very poor, and they were struggling to get by. My dad moved around with the army, and because of the ongoing conflict that's still going on between Kachin and Myanmar, he was stationed near my mother's village in Kachin. And because he was interested in medicine, um, he became a medic. And one day, my mom became really ill with malaria. I think you kind of know where this story is going. Uh, she couldn't afford to go to clinic. She couldn't afford to go to hospital. She was just lying in bed all day. My, my grandmother thought that my mom was going to die. Right? It was really serious. And along came my dad, the knight in shining armor, he gave her medicine, he treated her, she was better, and he was in love. And the rest, as someone once said, is history. This is a photo of my, 
parents on the wedding day in Kachin, uh, 1977, May 21st. And I know some of you are thinking, isn't today May 21st? Yes, today is May 21st. Today is my parents' 40th. Today is my parents' 40th wedding anniversary. They're actually in the crowd. I know. <laughs> So they were telling me this story, and I remember like smiling a lot, like laughing with them uh, throughout the story because it's very cute, right? And I noticed they were also beaming with joy, as if as if they were reliving this moment as they were telling me the story. And I felt at that moment that I feel a little bit closer to my parents. I feel like I understand them in a way that I didn't in a way that I couldn't before. Like, certain kind of barrier has been broken down because of their love story. And that is the first time in my life where I experienced the power of stories to connect and heal. So I wondered, how about other people? How did their parents meet, right? Maybe I can find other interesting, uh, these personal tales and collect them. So I started talking to my friends. I started talking to anybody I meet. Actually, I talked to my workers, co-workers, people I randomly find on the street. I started asking, how did your parents meet? Uh, I recorded their story on my phone. Uh, I edited them. And I started producing a mini series called How My Parents Met. I, I couldn't grow facial hair, so this is like closest to hipster that I could be starting a podcast. So a friend told me about her dad, who's a devout Christian, who had a dream one night that God told him that her mom was the one for him. <laughs> uh, frankly, you can't get a better recommendation than that, right? And he was right. God was right because they're still together after 30 years. Another friend told me about his grandparents both Holocaust survivors who met and fell in love in post-war Germany. I interviewed a couple who were separate, separated in 1988 student protests in Yango. They ran away and were later reunited in Thailand as refugees. So I was doing all this, you know, as if I have nothing better to do. <laughs> so one day I was at a coffee shop. I was interviewing my friend Pai Lin Waddell. She's a Thai American. And she was telling me about how her parents met in Thailand in the 70s. It's a very cute story. And, and she's a journalist, right? She's a journalist. So at the end of our conversation, she started asking me questions like, what do you think about relationships and stuff? So I told her that I have my doubts about long-lasting relationships because I've been married while I was in the US. And and I got a divorce. And I came back to Burma in 2013. She has this like, look of surprise when, I, when she found out I was divorced. But she also has this look like she's figured something out. Like, oh, I know what's going on. Right? And she told me something, and I will never forget because I have it on tape. Um, <laughs> So this is Pailin. Uh, Do you think that that also has something to do with this experience? Yeah. 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 It sounds so sad to have somebody like describe you like that, like let alone like to your face, <laughs> as if I'm this like heartbroken guy just walking around Yango with a recorder. Like, do you have a love story? Do you have a love story? Do you have a love story? <laughs> as if I'm a drug addict, you know, chasing a high. Bro, do you have some love story, bro? <laughs> sounds so sad, but it's also very true. 
It's very true. If I'm being honest with myself, the reason I'm collecting these personal tales has everything to do with my divorce. My ex-wife was my college sweetheart. We were best friends. She was my best friend. And she meant a lot to me. So uh, this, this was a tough time, you know, a tough time for me. I used to be in a metal band as, as a teenager. But this was a time in my life where I was listening to Phil Collins against all odd, like on repeat, you know? How can I just let you walk away? <laughs> There's some kids in the crowd who doesn't know, like who don't know who Phil Collins is. Phil Collins is like Sam Smith, but bald. Right? <laughs> Thank you. At night, I will walk around downtown Yango with a spray can. I will paint love poems on the wall, right? Love is so short, forgetting so long. Pablo Naruda. I know, I was, I was there. <laughs> the point is, I was lovesick, you know? And doing these love stories is a way to heal myself, a kind of therapy, if you will. And the funny thing is that it works. It sounds so cliche, but it works. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel hopeful about, about love, about life. It's just great to have somebody to talk to about relationship, about, about heartbreaks, about heartaches. But there's another layer too, right? Most people, when they think about like, oh, people, people breaking up, Oh, you want to find somebody new, right? Or you want to escape from that pain. But the truth is that that pain can sometimes feel so good. <laughs> so good. Like the act of like drowning in your own sorrow can be like so satisfying. It's like, it's like eating a bowl of hot, spicy mohenga. It's like, it burns you, it burns you, but it's so good, so delicious, you can't stop eating it. <laughs> so, hearing love stories about other people, how things worked out for them, but didn't work out for me, makes me feel both hopeful and also, I felt a little bit of despair as well, but that was exactly what I needed at the time to recover. That was the second time in my life when stories helped me heal old wounds. And stories can do that, you know? Stories can do that because we have this innate ability to fecal. Let me explain to you about the concept fecal. It's very technical, so bear with me. It's a Myanmar slang, which is half English, half Burmese. Fi refers to feelings or feels in internet speak. Ko means to steal. So fi ko literally means to steal the feels, to listen to somebody else's story and feel the emotion that they feel throughout the story, following the journey. That's what fi ko means. And I also learned that this ability to fecal, right, this fecal, it's an essential skill if you want to be a good storyteller. If you want to be a good storyteller, you have to be able to fecal. <laughs> so in 2013, when I came back to Myanmar, I wasn't just feeling like disconnected from my parents. I wasn't just feeling heartbroken. I also like, didn't know what to do with my life, you know? I studied philosophy in college, so I wasn't thinking about careers or making money. I was busy contemplating the nature of truth, the capital T, truth. But I came back and I soon became a filmmaker. I became a filmmaker for the same reason I listened to Eminem when I was 16. 
I did it because all my friends were doing it. I didn't have any skills of being a filmmaker. But through doing these love stories, I learned the art of storytelling. I learned to ask good questions. I learned to make people comfortable so that they open up to me, open their emotions to me. I learned to edit, I learned to produce stories, and now I make a living telling stories. I, tell, I make a living telling stories through films, through short films, and documentaries. And here I am, telling you about my parents and my most personal heartbreaks. <laughs> but why, right? That is one question that I learned from my philosophy classes. You always ask, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I telling you the story? Why are we here today listening to other people's stories and their experience? Why? Because we need stories. We need them. Myanmar is changing. Everybody knows that. We're trying to walk sometime gingerly towards something that we feel is a better future for us, but we have a lot of old wounds to heal. Not just Dema. I mean, if you've been following the international news for the past year, it feels like we're living in a more divided world, divided along religious line, racial line, political line, you name it. Right. And I think one way to find that connection again and bridge that divide is through stories. And when I say stories, I don't mean those like big epic stories of love and hate, war and peace. I don't mean Romeo and Juliet. I mean small, intimate, personal stories. Stories that won't make it into headlines. Stories that won't be made into movies. Stories that your mom told you about your grandmother. Story that your coworker told you about her family. Stories that will bring you a little bit closer to people around us. So let's do this, right? Let's go talk to our parents. Call your mom. She's been waiting for you to call. Um, let's talk to our siblings. I know they're annoying sometimes, but call them anyway. Talk to them. Talk to our neighbor. Talk to the woman who sells mohenga. Talk to the guy who drives trishaw at the top, top of the street. Let's listen to their story. Let's be cold from the stories. Because that's, that's, that's one way that we will find that connection. That connection to, to your parents, uh, uh, to your neighborhood, to your city, to your community, to this country that we love. So let us learn to heal together. Let us grow together. Let us try to get to a better place, fee one small story at a time. Thank you. You've been great. <laughs>